now it's time to move on to the back pressure sensor for the turbo so let me clean up from this stuff and then we got to spill the bag of shame over here and i gotta see if i have enough fittings because all i bought was the sensor and I'm like oh i'll figure it out well today's the day and i have to use what i have because i don't have time to go run and get something and come back and do the work because i gotta load this thing up and go to the dyno later so uh yeah let's clean up unload the bag of shame and then hopefully we have something i don't even care what it looks like because it's just temporary so when we run on the dyno we can log back pressure so let's do that all right i've got my million dollar bag of shame right here this is all my an fittings and stuff from over the years and then these are the pressure transducers that i use although i may have kind of messed up but we're going to find out i only got a 30 psi sensor because we're not pushing big boost in my car at all most it's ever seen was 15 pounds so i figured this would be sufficient uh, if i maxed it out obviously it's way too much pressure but from what i heard everybody's like oh you need the bigger like the 100 psi so if you do it i guess you get 100 but this is going to have better resolution and my car is a low boost car so this works for my application or at least i think it does so we're going to plumb it in and it's easy to change the sensor once i have it all in there wired up not a big deal anyway so uh that is the sensor now we got to figure out how to get this eighth inch npt i believe uh into the exhaust manifold or the i'm sorry the I think I want to go in the crossover so I can weld it up and then plug it up or something. Some guys put this into the, not this portion, but they tap into the turbo. Um, so you would want to tap into the exhaust like underneath. But it's kind of a pain in the ass for me to get to. What's easier for me to get to is the crossover on the bottom. And I think kind of it's all pressure because this is where it backs up. But I don't know if the reading is going to be different there from down there. Um, but I think we're going to plumb it in down there to make my life easy. And then I can bring the wires up this way on the firewall or whatever. Uh, I don't know. We'll have to crawl underneath. Especially now since I just ran the crap out of it. Now that everything's all hot. But let's figure out a plan. And then we're going to let this cool off a bit and we'll go from there. okay so we'll spread this out and we'll look for a way to plumb that up i kind of have an idea but we got to see what i got for fittings all right okay so i think i have what i'm gonna do i have this set up and this actually would go on to a brake caliper and it would measure the pressure because i had a unibody truck at one point and i was doing like autocross and road race style stuff so i need my brakes to work good and i was having issues with them so i want to make sure the pressure was there when i was pushing on the pedal on all four corners so i had this and i made it up and it's just been sitting in my bag in case i ever needed to check brake pressure again well today we're going to sacrifice it well not really sacrifice it i'm gonna take the gauge off I think this is some crappy metal, but I should be able to weld this uh, piece to the exhaust, I'm hoping. And then I'm going to cut these ends off, and then I've got some brake steel tubing, which should take the heat. Um, and then I'll cut this other end off, or I think I've got another hose somewhere with one of the ends like this on there. And then I've got, i got to make sure, yes, you have collars laying around. So this is a correct size collar. And then I should have another one, yeah, right here. So we've got collars for this. For that and then there's a little 90 and this goes into my pressure so we're just trying to get monitor the pressure of the exhaust and get it over to here but we got to get it away from the exhaust and then like this thing this is too short and this would all melt and not be fun so all right i had an extra hose that had an end like this and i already robbed this collar and i was like huh i just wanted to see so i cut this off of it well it's got that little pin in it so just a note this thing and i hit it with a punch thinking it would just push out it's stuck so they drive this pin in and it captures it so it doesn't slide back and forth so i'm not going to waste my whole day trying to drill that out and everything for one fitting so option plan b is to use this block this is supposed to be like a vacuum block um, i have this fitting that came on the magnifuel pump it's got a rubber 
o-ring so we'll see it that should hold up because we'll get it far enough away from temperature and then the other nice thing is i have a cap that's dash six and then i got this guy that uh, is a dash six fitting so we'll just have a really big pressure line i guess instead of a small one so we'll weld this to the exhaust so when i'm done i can take it off and just cap it with this and just have the, the line sticking out there for pressure which is kind of gaudy but it is what it is and then um, i'll just run a six line which is this big old donkey i don't know if that maybe, maybe this is six i have six yeah so i've got some six up here so we'll run this um and i've got a bunch of fittings and things because i've done a bunch of six stuff so new plan it's a new plan we'll bag all this stuff up i'm just bummed i gotta put this big ass block in there and then the reason i gotta run the block is so the sensor will thread in see where all these little guys are coming out that's all eight mpt so i can run that here run the sensor in and then monitor it so and then i gotta plug all of these holes so we'll take down plug these tighten that up and then we'll weld this to the exhaust punch a hole weld this on and then we'll just make a line from here to there and then when i'm done at the diner or whatever i'll just kind of throw this somewhere um i can just put the cap on the exhaust i don't have to really cut this off and weld it up or whatever we'll just cap it off if i need to monitor other turbos or whatever if i keep that crossover for later all right we got this sweet apparatus uh put together Again, this is just a vacuum distribution block. It's supposed to be. We're gonna use it for pressure. So I plugged all the holes up. Got my pressure sensor here, 30 PSI. And then um, there's an O-ring behind there. So I gotta keep this far enough away so it doesn't get hot, to, hot enough to melt that. And there's one on this side. And then we're just gonna plumb it in with the dash six. So I got my little line here that has my fittings. I've got some dash six aluminum over there. Um, and then I got this weld to the crossover underneath my car and then we'll cap it off with this when uh when we're all said and done that way we don't have an exhaust leak and hopefully that thing doesn't rattle off so let's jack the car up weld this bad boy to the crossover i'll drill a hole weld this on and then um yeah we'll go from there i just wonder where the best spot is for pressure so i'd imagine that would kind of be it right before the turbo but my brain tells me that the whole system, even if it's there, the way pressure works is the whole manifold will be pressurized, I believe. Hey, pipe down. Shoot. Lou. There's another dog over there. She's getting, she's angry. So like I was saying, I think the way my brain works, I don't think, it's not flow, it's pressure. So this is a restriction. That whole pipe should back up with a similar amount of pressure. So, for ease of... Should check this thing up more. Ugh. So I think for ease of welding and all of that, like right here, I mean, it's easy to get to. I can weld all the way around it. I think we're gonna do that. I've got plenty of room to work right here. So let's just, I don't know if that's hot still, but let's do that. Um, yeah, we'll just make it happen right here. Come on now, come on. Got a hole, we got this dude. We'll just stick it over the top, weld it up and that'll be my pressure output. So we'll clean this up, probably grind this down and clean up whatever's on here. I'm gonna jack the car up a little bit more because I have zero room. So let's do that we'll come back, clean it up. We'll weld that thing on and we are good to keep on rolling, hopefully. Yeah, what we can do, we can cap it. And I can just start this turret up, put the cap on it. We can give a little squirt, see if it leaks.
All right, we got one little guy off to the left. Huh, one more time. I'm gonna booger this thing up, call it good. This thing, I actually had it mounted up here before. And it's pretty ugly, but I already have a hole for it, so. So I cut these ends off of another little piece that I had. So we got the collar and the, uh, the nut and the collar, I guess. One for each end. And then this is the dash six that I had left on the shelf, which should be plenty. So what I want to do is I want to come off that one fitting, make a turn, then make kind of like a coil. So it gives it a little chance to cool it off and they'll bring it up and plug it into this wonderful apparatus. And a quick funny story with this fitting, so this is a steel fitting that somebody welded and then they tapped it into this. This came on my MagnaFuel pump, the 4301 I bought. And I just laughed about this and took it off and I was gonna throw it away, but I just put it in my bag. Well, fast forward, here we are. Look who's actually using it on his car. So it's kind of fun. Uh, yeah, I don't know, you just keep stuff. Even though it's goofy and funky, it has a purpose. It's gonna work today. It held fuel, it'll hold exhaust pressure, so. Um, it is what it is. Kind of matches the motif we got going anyway. So, need to plumb it from down there to up here. All right, let me move this one. This thing's hot. All right, I got the end made on here because I'm gonna grab. I got an aerosol can right there, and I'm just gonna wrap this around that by hand until I get a good little uh, curly Q deal, and then we'll plumb it up um, into our little chingadera on the firewall. So. All right, so there you go. That's kind of how you do a curly Q. And then just not too much pressure so you don't flatten it out. But um, let me finish kind of making the shape we want. And we'll plumb it in and I'll show you guys. All right, so this is my apparatus that uh, hopefully will work out. So exhaust pressure should come from there up the tube into the vacuum manifold. And then this should monitor the change in PSI. So. Now we have to wire it, so we'll jump inside. I gotta find my five volt reference. Uh, one's ground uh, signal, ground, and then five volt power. Okay, so I've pulled this mess down, and these this is my last input and my last output, so we are pretty much out of uh, inputs and outputs on the Terminator X. So since it's my last one, what I'd like to do is um, it's a five volt, so this is my five volt out, breakout out of this harness, and this is the ground. I believe this is computer ground, and that's 12 volt, but my sensor is a five volt sensor, so all you need is your five volt power source, and a ground, and then the signal goes to the computer. So that's pretty much how it works. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna stick another wire on there, uh, orange, so that way it matches and leave some length on it. That way I can just cut and splice to it so I don't have to come in here every single time because I have a feeling um, I might do different things with that. So that'll just give me a little jumper piece instead of having to come in here every time. So I'll just have a random wire hanging out that'll be five volt all the time. And here's my wires coming from the outside, although they're short, so I'm gonna do the work outside and feed it back through. So again, it's signal. The red is for five volts, not 12, five, and then black is ground. So we'll do that and then I'll figure out which one of these is an input. It's funny because they have it gray is one and white is the other but I always forget which one's input which oh here you go the whites are inputs so that means this white and green would be my last input. All right so I'll make a little jumper piece we'll put it on there wrap this up so it's tidy and then we'll wire everything in see if it works. All right so we got this thing wired up my computer's sitting here it took a little uh, doing to figure out how to add a gauge that doesn't exist um, to the software and to log it, but let me show you guys that it works. 
and then we will get into that in a whole nother deal if you guys want to see how I added that in and everything I think I'll just keep that separate and do that in a separate Holly video because it takes a lot of time to explain and I've got stuff to do we got to get out of here and go to the dyno but let me show you that it works so fired up kind of a chore but it was a fun learning experience not too hard not that difficult once you get familiar with the holly software it's not that bad like i didn't even have to reference the internet for once so i'm feeling pretty good a little pat on the back for myself because usually it's straight to google panic mode or uh slop mechanics is my usual mo but if you like this you know what to do like subscribe share we're gonna be taking this thing to the dyno so stick around keep it locked i gotta wrap this up put the camera down clean up we got to go but that's it for today on this video you guys you know what to do i'm out